Awesome. All right, everyone is hopping in. I'm a Laura Hyatt, not Jordan Freed, as my screen says, but Jordan Freed is here today, which is super exciting. Celebrity so, guest appearance. I know. So if you will <laughs> do me a favor, I would love to see your beautiful faces. So highly encourage you if you're in a place where you can to turn your camera on. Um, Madison and I are back for week two of our little takeover, if you will. So we are working our way through a, a multi-part series about intentional living. Last week, we uh, spent some time talking about core values, right? Really getting clear on who you are as a human. Because if we are not clear on who we are, then we are going to end up living someone else's life, not our own, right? And today, we are going to do a little bit of a deep dive into habits. So we're going to let people hop in while they're still coming, which is awesome. So we're going to let them hop in before we really dive into the framework today. <clears throat> Look at all these people with screens on. Yes. Love it. <laughs> We're starting a trend. We are starting a trend. <laughs> it's like an actual audience. It's great. All right. So um, as people come in, they can just hop on, but we're going to go ahead and get started because I know that your time is valuable. Um, today, like I mentioned, we are diving into habits and we know that your habits will determine your future. So I'm going to kick us off this morning with a little bit of an overview and then Madison's going to take over for part two, which is tactical application of habits. So when we think of ourselves as humans, I'm a big believer, y'all, that if you're a whole human, which you are, then your habits should reflect that. And oftentimes when we think about habits, we think about, oh, well, I mean, I brush my teeth every day, right? But what about the habits related to your mind, to your body, to your soul, right? Being a whole human means we have habits related to all three of those. So we're going to break it down. When we talk about your mind, we're talking about the most important decision that we get to make every single day is what we put into our mind, right? What are the things that we do on a regular basis to keep our feet on the ground, right? Before the day gets going. What are the things that we're doing to quiet our mind? Um, two of my favorite ways to do that are to read and to journal. These are my two favorite books for that. You got The Pivot Year by Brianna Weiss and The Way Forward by Young Pueblo. Um, these two books are one of those like, read a snippet and call it a day, right? But something to prime your mind in the morning before the world takes over. We all live very busy, very full lives. And I'm sure each of you have a time when, you know, when the clock hits X time, you're off to the races, right? So carving out that intentional time before that happens is so important. It's also the idea of choosing books, podcasts, journaling versus news, trash TV, doom scrolling, right? How we start our day, when we put into our minds will determine the rest of our day. So I know we all love a, a little social media scroll. And is that really the best habit that we can install first thing in the morning? Okay. So think about that. And when you're journaling, you don't have to get crazy. I know some people are big journals. Errs, journalers. Some people are not. Be free with it, right? My personal practice is I love just a page a day. It is a blank sheet of paper. And some days I am writing a book. Some days I'm answering a question. Some days I literally will write one sentence. Some days I just won't do it, right? But it's that opportunity for me to slow my mind down. And that's the point of habits related to your mind. How can you create opportunity and space? For your mind to really wiggle into the places that it needs to go. Okay. Next up is your body, right? Y'all, we get one vessel and one dash. We get the body that we have, so we better darn well take care of it. And we only get the dash, the time between when we were born and when we die. And if tomorrow is hoped for but never promised, then we need to live that dash very well, right? Every body is different, right? So some of you might be like, I love yoga. Some might be, I love to run marathons. That is not me. I do not run. But you can have different things to work your body, right? So if you're going to start a new habit regarding your body, it could be, hey, you know what? 
going to make sure I drink my water today. I'm going to drink 60 ounces of water every day for the next 30 days. I'm going to hit 8,000 steps. You could chunk it down to something very small. Or it could be, you know what? I'm going to dive in and go for, I'm going to start Orange Theory. That sounds like fun. It's not fun, but I do it. So just <laughs> FYI on that one. Um, but find what feels good. Try new things. Stick with something for at least, I'm going to say 30 days, right? Before you quit. I'm going to be honest. When I started Orange Theory, I was like, I think not. <laughs> I think <laughs> not. And then here we are six, eight months down the road. And it's actually a, just a practice now of what I do. So when it comes to your body, find whatever feels good to you um, and enlist support. Okay. Those are the two takeaways for that. And then when it comes to your soul, guys, high achievers, which I believe that all of us are, um, high achievers and burnout can go hand in hand if we're not careful, right? Think about your car. What happens if we push that engine too hard for too long, right? We overheat. We're over on the side of the road. Well, the same thing will happen to you if we don't, if we don't pause and like listen and be quiet, okay? I don't know if any of you have ever hit burnout. I have. It's not fun. I do not recommend. Um, and so this is why we're doing this, right? Here are some habits and things that we can install to make sure that we are taking care of our soul. So what I mean by that is uh, give a practice of stillness. This could be meditation practice. This could be prayer. This could be just sitting in the quiet to listen to the nudges. We cannot hear the nudges if we are constantly talking, right? Um, if God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason, maybe we should listen twice as long as we talk, right? So what's your practice for getting still? Ryan Holiday has this quote from his book, Stillness is Key. He says, it is in this stillness that we can be present and finally see truth. It is in this stillness that we can hear the voice inside of us. And if our external voice is always talking, if the chatter is always happening outside, we will never be able to hear the voice inside, right? So when we think about this, remember it's your whole human. So we're talking, what's your practice for your mind? So what are you putting in, right? The podcast, the books, et cetera. Are you journaling? Your body, taking care of it, making sure that You've got this one vessel to the best of your ability. You are giving it its best opportunity to live a long and full life. And then you're talking about the soul, right? How are you listening to the stillness? So Madison is going to talk about how do we install and uninstall these habits, right? Because there's knowing about habits that we should have. Then we, we want to have good habits. We want to break the bad ones. But what about the practical application of actually making that happen. Madison? Yeah, thanks for teeing us up there. Okay, so one thing that when I was preparing for this, I like habit is the word that is so overused, but I don't think that we really understand what a habit is, right? So a habit is a repeated set of actions that has dropped into our unconscious programming, meaning we do it without even thinking about it. One great example I can think of is how many of you guys remember the first day you started driving? What was that like for you? Yeah, I see a smile over there. Yeah, David's like, uh, do we remember sitting behind the wheel for the first time? And I was like, you're trusting me to drive this thing? And I was like, okay, I got to focus on my pedal. I got to focus on my hands. When I make a left turn, I need to like drive this one over and then I got to cross and grab and then cross, but don't forget the pedal, right? So I remember this overwhelming feeling of like, this is, this is gonna, how do people do this every single day? And then slowly by, you know, by practicing and doing it over and over and over again, the repeated set of action it drops into our unconscious programming. Now we're sitting there driving, listening to the radio, talking to our best friend and eating Chick-fil-A at the same time, right? Any of us guilty of that or just me, right? Okay, yeah, I know. So it's like, how did this evolve so naturally 
into unconscious programming. And thank God our bodies have the ability to do this because let's think for a second of what our world would be like if we didn't have the ability to drop things into unconscious programming. I was thinking about it this morning. What if you had to think about getting to, out of bed? You had to think about how to walk to the bathroom. You had to think about brushing. We would be exhausted before we even got to our coffee, right? So thank God our bodies have the ability to do this. However, because we do this, we have probably installed some bad habits along the way, right? So let's take a second. And if you can just write down, share in the chat, share if unmute yourself and share, what are some good habits that you have already? And maybe what are some bad habits that you have installed unconsciously? Anyone want to share? I'll jump in. Cool. So I made a commitment at the beginning of the year that I do a minimum of at least 10 sit-ups and 10 push-ups every single day. Yeah. And as we crossed over the end of May, had gone 151 consecutive days. And what I found was once the momentum had started, I'm probably closer to the 30 each per category per day. And that consistency has had me feeling better, sleeping better, um, greater sense of focus. So it's kind of the snowball effect of consistency. Great. And have you figured out that you are doing those things at the same time every day? Has Absolutely. it become something that it's like, wake up, do the exercise or have my coffee, do the exercise? Correct. So it's once I finish my cardio or it's immediately before I get into the shower because I don't want to be sweaty after I do those exercises. Exactly. Do that before I do anything else. Great. Great job. Thanks for sharing. Anybody else? Thanks. Maybe a bad habit. Anyone That's willing to share a bad habit? Oh, do we got some in the chat? Yeah, Michelle is saying she's great at workouts, maybe bad at cruising through the kitchen on the way to bed. Hey, hey. all right. Well, I am here to help you with this today because I am an advocate that I had a lot, still have habits that I have to break. We're all a work in progress. Anyone who tells you they're not probably shouldn't be listening to them because we all have habits that we're trying to break. So I'm going to give you a couple of different strategies to break bad habits. Does that sound good? Cool. Awesome. So if you've heard Jordan speak, and I wasn't expecting Jordan to be on here today, so so wonderful that you're here. You've probably heard him say the equation, his favorite co coaching equation, performance equals potential minus interference. Has anyone else heard this before? I know Madison has. She was in, they, or in uh, Destin with us. Performance equals potential minus interference. And what Jordan says is if you want to increase your potential, we got to identify and decrease all that interference, right? Well, the opposite is also true. If you want to decrease the performance of your negative habits, you can increase your interference. Let me illustrate that for you. So back during COVID, I, I'll i share my bad habit. I was an avid Netflix binge watcher. Anybody else admitted that they are there with you? Okay, all right, we all were. Good to know, I'm not the only one. So I was watching everything I could get my hands on, anything someone recommended. I was just wake up, turn on the TV, binge watch. And I happened to take a pause, thank goodness, and reading a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear, which probably a lot of you have read. It's a very popular book. If you haven't, it's it's one that everyone should read. Um, and what he said was, he talked about increasing this interference. So one of the suggestions he had for binge watching was to take the remote and put it in the drawer in your kitchen. So that's exactly what I did. I increased the interference. So instead of sitting down and turning the TV on right away, I had to get up, walk across the room, walk into the kitchen, open the drawer and get my remote. And what did that time allow me to do? It allowed me to have awareness, hey, it's happening again. 
this is now not a habit. It is back in my awareness and I can choose to leave the remote there or I can choose to say, I'm just going to watch one episode or I'm just going to watch one TV program. So what, if we're looking at the bad habits that you wrote down, what are some interferences that you can strategically put into place so that you can cause that pattern interrupt and create that awareness again? Anyone want to share? I think one of the easiest yeah. options, right? If you're a, a, I struggle with getting up kind of person, right? Is mm -hmm. to make sure that your alarm clock or your phone, because let's be real, you know, is not adjacent to your bed, that you have to yep. physically get out of your bed in order to turn that off. Yep. It's so easy. that is a great habit. If you have ever struggled with getting out of bed or making the, con like the unconscious turning off the alarm, Take your phone, plug it in to where you have to get out of bed to unplug it. That interference, once again, breaks the pattern of the habit. Yeah, David says in the chat, moving the ice cream scoop out of the kitchen. Yes, it's something that seems so simple, yet, David, I challenge you to try it. Because when you do that, you are going to pattern erupt enough to make the decision different. And that is what we fall into so much is that we just don't have the awareness. People are like, you need to stop turning off the alarm. I'm like, I didn't even know I was doing it. I didn't even know that it was happening. It's the awareness we need to find again. And in order to do that, you have to put in the interference. Uh, Jordan said, leave your phone in your glove box when you get home. Yes, leave your phone in your glove box. One habit that I've heard a lot of my friends talking about texting and driving, they take their phones and they drop it on their passenger side floorboard so they can't get it. What an interference that is, right? You're like, I, I literally can't reach my phone. So how am I going to sit there and text all day? And so turn I turn off your car notifications that tell you you have a text. Exactly. So I challenge you all to think of interference as your friend when it comes to breaking bad habits. Okay, so another strategy I want to just go over really quick is habit stacking. Has anyone ever heard of this before? Okay, for those of you who have not, the there's a reason I had you list your good habits ahead of time, right? David, you're crunching, um, doing your crunches. What can I strategically stack on top of that habit so that I can consistently do it. For example, I want to take my vitamins every single day. I always forget. There, it's not that I don't want to take them. It's just I forget to do it. I know I take my drink my coffee first thing every morning. So where am I going to put my vitamins? Right next to my coffee maker. That is an easy way to install really good habits is by stacking them on simple habits that you know you do every day. Um, another one, say like you know you drink coffee every day, but you want to go to the gym every day. Maybe you put your coffee grounds by your workout clothes. So you have to go put your workout clothes on in order to go make the coffee. How much better prepared would you be to do your action if you've already taken that first step? Awesome. Okay. So take a second. Anyone want to share on what habit they could stack on in order to create a better habit or create a new habit? Or share your favorite habit stacking combos. So one of the things that um, I believe that we don't obviously do enough is flossing your teeth, right? There's a direct correlation between uh, your health in the 60s and 70s uh, and flossing your teeth, uh, your your age in the 60s and 70s, right? And um, one of the things that after I read that book is I, I realized that 
I have to floss my teeth before I brush them. And so I'm always going to brush them before I go to bed. And so the habit mm -hmm. step of floss your teeth first, right? Mm -hmm. And then you brush your teeth. Um, and I wanted to share if you if you guys don't mind some of the the things I took away from today. Do you mind if I just jump right into that? Please do. Go for it. Okay, so the team is going to laugh at me, but um, one of the things that uh, Laura Hyatt discussed that um, I, I firmly believe in the quote that John Maxwell shared that until you do, you change something you do daily, you will not change your life. And an integral part of my free life is that we don't want the teachings and the things that we share here to fall victim to shelf help. And there's a simple system that I've kind of refined over the last six weeks or so. And so write this down. It's prime, prompt, perform. Prime, prompt, perform. Priming is something that you're going to do in the morning that's going to prime your nervous system so that you're kind of rebooting this, this mind, this really it's your focus. And my favorite all-time one is priming from Tony Robbins. You can Google that. You can find it on YouTube. Uh, but having some type of daily mindfulness practice, I'll share with you the thing that I've really loved because I've been listening more and more to Andrew Huberman. I know he's been in the uh, news lately. I personally don't care about all of that, but I love the information that he puts out. And he talks about the importance of getting sunshine into your eyeballs early in the morning. And so mm -hmm. uh, in the summertime, the sun rises a little bit earlier, at least where I live. And so I've been going out, sitting in a chair and doing my priming while I'm looking not at the sun, but in the direction of the sun. And I have found that, especially on those days when I'm a little bit tired, or maybe I'm just not like coming online as quickly as I would like, that that, that priming in the sun, and I learned from Madison's mom, the power of grounding. Grounding is where you take your bare feet and put them in the grass or on the ground. And you can go look up the benefits of this, but we spend far too much time on concrete and shoes. We we don't touch the earth like we used to. And I think that it's important that we do. So when I'm doing this, I've got my bare feet in the grass on the ground. Um, and so that priming exercise is really important. It's just a 10 to 15 minute routine that's going to set the tone of your day. The second piece is when we're talking about prompting, prompting. Now, you... Uh, whatever your whatever your feeling is based on what you're focused on right so uh what controls your focus are the questions you ask yourself or the prompts that you put into it and so like right now you know as many of you know we're going through this season with my mom and things have been uh challenging and during that time it's really easy to slip into poor habits around diet and exercise and all of that but my mantra has been you know i i literally can't afford to not be at my best. I have to be at my best right now. And so the prompt that I've been putting into my mind in the morning, and this is very simple, uh, is today I will make the best decisions possible for my wealth and my health. Today I will make the best decision possible uh, for my wealth and my health. And so all it is, is it's just a reminder. It's just turning your brain and your focus onto this idea of what it is that you're going to uh, allow your day to unfold around. Now, perform is at the end of the day, you take your prompt statement and turn it into a question. And so how today did I make this the best decisions for my wealth and my health? How did I today make the best decisions for my wealth and my health? And all I'm looking for is one decision that changed based upon this process, just one. So today, instead of, you know, um, ignoring the workout, I did the workout. Uh, today, and I, I drank the, the, you know, gallon of water because that's what I'm after right now. So I'm just looking for evidence of different decision. If you're ever looking for, am I actually on the path to change intentionally designing who I intend to be? You can always look at the evidence based on different decisions that you've made. Now, the thing that also that Laura Hyatt said that I wrote down that I absolutely love is this one page in the journal. I would encourage each and every one of you uh, to take advantage of that. And I think you could put that right in um, underneath that perform question, right? And what I wrote down is this is just a transcription of your mind. 
all you're doing is just what's what was the transcription of the podcast that I played today? You don't have to go word for word, but what were the bulleted points of the podcast that I played in my mind? As many of you know, uh, I believe we all have a personal podcast. It's the story you tell to yourself about yourself when you're by yourself. And I would love to know, uh, and I'm going to start doing this based on her recommendation here. Like, what are these things that I'm telling myself? What was the headline of my podcast today? And uh, as Madison said, you know, this she said, time to have awareness. Um, the thing that's so important about awareness, whether we're talking about uh, the illustration or the transcription of your podcast, or uh, putting a little bit of space in between your remote and uh, your decision to turn on the TV, is that awareness creates choice. Awareness creates choice. And so we want to inject some choice into our habits because that gives us the ability to be very clear. And I think that uh, uh, another prompting question that I would arm you with, I would encourage you to put in your pocket and carry around with you is, what would the hero version of myself do right now? What would the hero version of myself do right now? Would he sit down and binge watch this? Would he be checking his phone in front of his kids? Uh, would he eat that thing or would he eat that thing? And it's just this never ending moment of decision prompt that you can take with you. And the last thing I'll say, and I had never thought of it this way in the way that Madison described that, you know, that performance equals potential minus interference. That's something that you can obviously use in uh, increasing performance by reducing interference. But there are certain forces in your life, i.e. bad habits, that you want to increase the friction of. I had never thought of it that way. And so how do we increase the friction around the performance of the habits that we want to uninstall, that we want to break? So I thought that was brilliant. I think you ladies did a great job. So thank you. And the last thing I'll share with you, I have not like got this nailed, but I really like this app and um, it's called Streak. Streak. Now, not get naked and run through your town. I don't mean that. <laughs> But streak in the sense of you want to create streaks of your habits. And so like I've got six things right now that I'm really focused on um, eating slow carb, which is basically like paleo with uh, you can still have legumes, making sure that I'm sweating every day for 45 minutes, studying every day for 60 minutes. Everything has to start with an S. I don't care. My free life team, you just leave me alone. Uh, silence. Everything. Everything has to start with the same letter. Yeah. Silence for 20 minutes, sip a gallon of water and sleep by nine o'clock. So in bed by nine o'clock. And what I like about this, so like last night I was in bed, I just hold it down, does a little check mark. And now it's got my streak of how many days I've done this in a row. It was like six bucks. I really like this thing. And it, uh, I turned on the notification. So it kicks off throughout the day and reminds me to do this stuff. And I like the six S's because it's six S, six S. You guys get that? Ooh, ooh, so good. So good. So thank you, ladies, for today. I thought that uh, the, the insights that you shared were really great. And um, these two will be back with you. Well, I think Laura Hyatt will be back with you next week. Madison and I will be in Champaign, Illinois. Woo! my free life knowledge on some folks there. So if any of you are around Champaign, Springfield, Chicago, uh, you want to come join us, we've got an experience for you. And then I will be back in Wellness Wednesday in the driver's seat in two weeks. And uh, we're going to continue to drop a lot of value in this space. But thank you, Madison and Laura for today. I took a page of notes. I really appreciate it. Well, awesome. we're glad that you are our surprise guest today. So <laughs> yeah, and next week y'all come back because we are talking about one of my favorite pillars of intentional living and that is experiences. Um, and how, if you are clear on your values, you know who you are, you're installing the right habits, right? You're practicing the things. Then we get to have the life that we want. And a lot of that is lived out through experiences. So I'm gonna share a lot of tactical tools that I use to have um, a very experienced full life. So next week, same time, same place.